In a moment, we'll present the Texas Rangers. But first, here's a reminder that you can read all about your favorite NBC stars and find pictures of most of them in the current NBC Silver Jubilee issue of Radio TV Mirror Magazine. Buy it at your newsstand today. The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. <laughs> Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Helping Hand. It is 3.15 p.m. an afternoon in November 1950. A deluge of rain has swamped the deserted roads of West Texas, and a lone motorist sits disconsolately in a small sedan near the side of the road. His face brightens suddenly as a curtain jeep pulls to a stop beside him. Painted on the jeep's motor hood are the words, Joe's Garage. Uh, howdy! Howdy! Having trouble? Yeah, wires must have got soaked coming through that low spot in the wash back there. She... <laughs> Chugged and sputtered a ways and then conked out on me. Reckon we can fix that for you. Now get that kerosene squirt can, Rusty. Okay, Joe. You want the canvas, too? Yeah, raise his hood, then tent the canvas over so none of this rain beats in there. Yeah. You just sit there and relax, mister. We'll have a perkin in a minute. I'm sure grateful to you. What are you going to do? Squirt a little kerosene on ignition wires. Better release your hood. Oh, yeah. Okay, Rusty, lift her up. Yeah. You handle it all right? Sure. <laughs> you fellas sure know what you're doing. What do you mean? I can't see how you can get them wires dry by squirting them wetter. That's a mechanic's trick. Squirt them with kerosene, the kerosene gets under the water, and the water runs off. Then a minute or two, the kerosene runs off, too. What's left evaporates. <laughs> I reckon you'd know. I know, all right. When it rains like this, I do more business along this road than I do back at the shop. Reckon we've got a dozen stalled cars going today. Well, it's all sprayed, Joe. Okay, close her up. Uh, okay to dry her now? No, no, wait a second. Ugh. They got a couple of drops of water running down my neck. Only a mile up the road to Wally's Cafe. We'll stop for coffee after this fellow gets moving. Mm, sure could use some myself. I've been sitting here for more than an hour. Only other car to come through barreled right past. Where are you bound for? Long Ridge. Too bad his heap didn't hold out until I got there. <laughs> Coming back, they'll hand me a new car. Dealer called this morning to tell me he was in. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this thing ought to be ready to limp along now, Joe. Yeah, you can try starting it now. Oh, fine. Well, here's hoping. Ah, that was real quick. I'll be hanged. <laughs> that trick of yours really worked. I ain't never missed. I should buck a little at first, but watch the puddles. You'll be okay. Sure wish I... I knew how to thank you, fellas. Why, well, that ain't hard, mister. Charge is 15 bucks. Fifteen dollars? Standing out in this rain ain't fun, mister. You were stuck, weren't you? Yeah, I was stuck. Fifteen dollars seems like the kind of steep price for three minutes working a little kerosene. Look, I got a nice warm garage where the prices are regular. Working out here is a little bit different. Charge is fifteen bucks. I don't think I got 15 bucks. What are you, a wise guy? I reckon if you can buy a new car, you ain't exactly flat broke. I didn't say I was. I got money. The smallest bill I got's a hundred. Look, don't stall me. You could rot out here if we didn't happen along. The least you can do is pay up. I tell you, I got nothing but large bills. Money I got from a bank this morning to put down on a new car. Want your money? I'll meet you at the coffee place you was talking about and get changed. Well, where'd Wally get changed for a hundred in that crummy joint? Change ain't our problem, Joe. Our problem is whether or not this guy's really got a hundred bucks to begin with. Now, let's see it. You ain't seeing nothing. Matter of fact, I ain't so sure you got a right to charge me no fifteen dollars. 
And before I pay it, I'm going to stop at the sheriff's office in Long Ridge. You think I'm standing in this rain for fun? Now get out of that car. Come on. Let go of me. Hey, let go of my throat. Never mind the conversation, Joe. You've got hands and he's got pockets. Oh, no. You crazy. Stop this kick and rusty. Yeah, I'll stop it. Hey, Rusty. Hey, Rusty, look. Yeah. Five hundred bucks, Joe. Uh Uh-huh. I could do a lot with dough like that. What do you say, Joe? Why, he'd report it. Not if you got enough nerve. Well, I got as much nerve as you got. All right, then grab his feet. All right, move him in there off the road. Hey, he's coming, too. Not for long. All right, put him down. Now, get your heavy wrench. No, you're crazy. You back out on me? No, but I... I'm not chump enough to use my wrench on him. Look, be smart, Rusty. If we're going to do this, let's be smart and do it right. There's a big rock over there. Use that. The body of the slain man was found early the following morning when highway patrolmen examined the area around the seemingly abandoned car. The sheriff was summoned from Longridge, and he in turn requested the help of a Texas ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. Still might have wet from that rain yesterday, Jace. Yeah. Yeah, here's the body. Wanted you to see it before we moved it into town. Check his identification? Mm Mm-hmm. License description fits. Name's Arthur McShane. Comes from Hooper Springs. What are you looking at, Jace? I'm just noticing these footprints around the body, Sheriff. I puddled up too much to help. Rain washed the edges away. Carried in here by two men. Or walked in with one man? No, he was carried. If he'd have walked, there'd be some mud on his shoes. His feet never touched the ground after he left the pavement. How long do you think he's been dead? Well, looks like it's been quite a few hours. Any sign of a weapon around? There must have been one with his head like that. A big rock with a blood trace on the bottom of it was laying over there. Almost washed clean, so I didn't want to leave it. I had a deputy wrap it and take it in for your lab. Yeah, it won't help much. Might have held some blood, but the prints wouldn't take... Now, let's get back to the car. Right. Anybody touch the car? No, that's just like a highway patrol boy found it. Driver's door open, seat and steering wheel soaked with rain. Must have got out to fix something. Well, if he did, he must have got it fixed before he was killed, because the car works all right now. I checked it. I want to take a look underneath. You see something, Jase? Yeah. Oily spots on the pavement. Thin film on a couple of small puddles. Drip from the oil to crankcase, maybe? Oh, it's too thin for that. Too light. It's more like a gasoline drip. Well, gasoline drip would be further back under the carburetor. A yeah, lab man can check it. I want one to fly down and go over the car anyhow. Where's the nearest phone? Wally's Cafe, about a mile up the road. Wally's Cafe was a dilapidated roadside stop. I called Austin for a lab crew to fly down to Long Ridge, then the sheriff called the medical examiner who authorized a pickup for Arthur McShane's body. The sheriff hadn't had any breakfast. How about some ham in, Wally? Hey, you settle for bacon? Why, sure. How about you, Jase? Uh, just some coffee. Right. The lab man will want to bring that car into a garage, Sheriff. Where do you have your car service? Uh, Joe's garage. That's what little work we have. Hey, uh, you fellas want your coffee now or you want it with your egg, Sheriff? Uh, we'll take it now. Yeah. I don't think they're going to find much on the car, though. Anything on the outside would have been washed away by the rain. Yeah, this is going to be a tough nut. Well, here's your java. Say, I uh, hear you say something about uh, Joe's garage for, Sheriff. Yeah, why? Are uh, you going to see him in town? Well, I expect to. Uh, ask him to do me a favor, will you? Next time he stops by, I need a new fan belt from a pickup. I'll tell him. That's why I ain't got no ham. I couldn't make a trip into town for supplies today. Well, <laughs> I have to buy you a bicycle, Wally. <laughs> Be better than that pickup. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, why don't you make a flat deal with Joe? Pay him by the week and have him make one stop here every day. Be cheaper than Ann. I'm surprised he didn't stop by yesterday. Saw his jeep go barreling by late in the afternoon, headed for town. Oh, that darn rain. You know, I bet I didn't shove three blue plates across his counter all day yesterday. Didn't take in more than four dollars. <laughs> well, that's more than you're liable to take in today if you burn my eggs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> A 
lab man checked in on the plane from Austin and went out after McShane's car. I waited in the sheriff's office in town until the sheriff came in with a report from the medical examiner. Here's your autopsy report, Jase. Cause of death, cerebral hemorrhage. Due to a severe beating about the head. Blood on the rock we found matched McShane. Anything on the time of death? About 3.30 yesterday afternoon. 3.30, huh? Right. Uh, McShane's wife just got in town. Went over to the funeral home. You want to see her? Yeah. Be another hour or so before the lab man gets to Joe's garage. Taking that long to check those oil spots and a few other things out at the road. Funeral home's just up the street. Let's go. Him. Why, who could do a thing like this? Take it easy, man. <laughs> How come you didn't drive up here with him? I mean, you said he was coming up to get a new car. I should think he'd have wanted you along. Well, I didn't know about the car when he left. See, it was for our anniversary next week. A surprise. I didn't know until after he left yesterday. Well, how'd you find out then? From Abby Lawton. She's the banker's wife back home in Hooper Springs. When my husband took the money out of the bank yesterday, he told Bill Lawton why he was taking it. Well, Bill must have called Abby to tell her, and Abby called me. Abby's always doing things like that. Nobody ever gets surprised when she knows about anything. Uh, some people are like that, ma'am. You know how much money your husband was carrying? Well, she said he drew out $500 all in $100 bills. There's your motive, Sheriff. <laughs> sure is, Jase. Robbery. $100 bill shouldn't be too hard to trace, though. It'll depend on where and how soon the killer tries to spend them. You better call the bank at Hooper Springs and see if you can get a list of serial numbers. Do it pronto. If they have any numbers, we'll put them on a statewide bulletin. Right. Your, your husband have anything besides money on him, ma'am? Any jewelry or anything else that might have been taken? Well, no. He, he had a, a wristwatch, that's all. It wasn't on him when he was found. You know what make it was? No, I just know he had one. That's all he wore it all the time. I, I never gave it no special notice. Well, could you describe it? Well, it, it was gold. Leather strap. Well, I, I don't know. Men's watches all look the same to me. Who well, would you know it if you saw it again? Well, no, I, I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. Well, you ought to have somebody with you. If you've got a son or a daughter someplace, we could contact them no. for you. No, we didn't have no children. It was just, just him and me. <laughs> now I'm all alone. <laughs> the sheriff got a list of currency numbers from the bank, and we arranged for a bulletin to all banks and major stores in the state. We were leaving the telegraph office when we sighted the lab man coming down the main drag in McShane's car. We hailed him, and he pulled over to the curb. Howdy, Chase. Howdy, Sam. Howdy, Sheriff. Hiya. Ride into the garage with you if it won't disturb anything. No, hop in. Been all over that upholstery and everything. Lots of prints on the dashboard all the same. They're probably the dead man's. No sign of anybody else being in the car with him? Uh, none I could find. Of course, he might have had riders. Banker at Hooper Springs said McShane was alone when he left the bank. Saw him through the window when he got in his car. Yeah, he wasn't alone when he got killed. That's a cinch. How about those oily spots on the road, Sam? I mean, the ones under the car? Mm. They were kerosene spots, Chase. Kerosene was used to cut the grease on the ignition wires. Easy to tell, even with a field kit. Well, that means the ignition wires must have gotten wet. The car conked out on him, and he sprayed them. Yeah, that's what happened, all right. But he didn't do the spraying himself. Why? No sign of kerosene in the car, any place. No can, nothing. You checked the trunk? Empty. Look, Sheriff, where is that grass? Joe's. Three more blocks, then turn left. All right. I'll make one more check of the interior for blood trace, but I took a preliminary and it was blank. I'm afraid I'm not going to find anything. Say, you really don't have to come along unless you want to. I can drop you at the sheriff's office. No, we'll ride. I want to see that garage man anyhow. Oh, yeah, so do I. But Wally won't get his fan belt. I want to see him about more than Wally's fan belt. What? Wally said the jeep from Joe's garage passed his place yesterday afternoon on the way to town. Hey, that's right. He must have passed the spot McShane was killed at. No place between there and Wally's that he could have been coming from. No. And somebody stopped to help McShane get his car started. Let's find out who. Yeah, 
In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Now that fall is here and darkness comes upon us during the early afternoon hours, you as a driver must be ever alert for children in the streets and highways. Slow down at sundown. Follow the careful and courteous driving rules as set forth by the American Trucking Association. Remember that a rolling ball is always followed by a child. Keep alert. Drive as if a child's life depended upon your ability to see him before he he sees you. And it does. Remember, the life you save may be a child's. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers. And tonight's case, Helping Hand. An authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. There were two men in the garage as we drove in. One of them was wearing a mechanic's coverall. The other was seated in a chair, tilted back against the wall, trying to toss greasy playing cards into a hat placed ten feet away from him. The mechanic gave the car a strange look. Howdy, Sheriff. Is there something I can do for you? Yeah, Joe. Fellow from the Ranger Lab wants a little space to go over this car. Well, sure. I'll pull it right over to that corner. All right, thanks. You ever see that car before, Joe? I can't say, Ranger. I work on a lot of cars. Yesterday afternoon during the rain, this car was about a mile past Wally's place out on State 27. It was stalled with wet ignition wires. Somebody fixed them with a kerosene spray. Your Jeep was seen out that way. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess maybe it is a car I fixed. Uh, I guess you're going to be busy, Joe. I'll call you later. Oh, sure, sure, Rusty. Go ahead. Uh, just a second. What? How about this car, Joe? Well, uh, like I said, maybe I did work on it. Uh, got a few cars started on the highway yesterday. You keep saying maybe. How about making it yes or no? A mile east of Wally's. Well, yeah, yeah. I saw a car there. Yeah, just like that one. Uh, ignition wire soaked. You get him started? Yeah. Driver all right when you left him? Yeah, sure. They was all okay. Why? What do you mean by all? Wasn't the driver alone? No, no, no. He had a couple of guys with him, uh, hitchhikers. How do you know they were hitchhikers? Well, the driver said so. Guys were in the army uniform. They were sort of browned off about being stuck. Had to get back to base or something. Army guys, huh? Yeah, why? Was something happened to that driver? Yeah, something unpleasant. I better put out a pickup for a couple of soldiers, eh, Sheriff? Reckon you better, Jase. You, uh, still want me to wait, Ranger? Oh, I almost forgot about you. No, I just thought maybe you were with Joe yesterday when he fixed that car. No, no, I, I wasn't. I, I don't work here. Uh, no, no, he just stopped by. Oh, I see. Well, thanks. You're welcome. So long. Oh, uh, by the way. Yeah? What time you got? I, uh, just ten minutes after one. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Got a good-looking watch there. Keep pretty good time? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right on the dot. Must have had it for a long time, huh? Uh, yeah. I can see that. You ought to have the strap changed, though. It's getting too small for you. Huh? Mark on the leather band shows where you used to hook it through the fourth hole. You're wearing it hooked through the second hole now. So long. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be seeing you. See you later, Joe. Yeah, Rusty. Later. I'd noticed the watch strap right away. That's why I'd kept talking to Joe after I stopped Rusty from leaving. The waiting made him nervous, and he tried to keep the watch hidden. Joe gave us a fumbling description of two soldiers, which I pretended to phone to Austin. While I was phoning, I managed to signal the sheriff to pick up the greasy cards Rusty'd been tossing into the hat. We left the garage and took the lab man with us. Thanks, Joe. See you later. Uh, Sure thing. Uh, Bye, Ranger. So long, Joe. We'll see you again. Jase, what'd you pull me out for? I wasn't finished. I know. I've got something else for you to check on. Oh? What? Some playing cards the sheriff has. Yeah. Yeah. I caught your signal, Jase. But what'd you want these for? Step around the side of the building here. Those cards are pretty greasy, Sam. Think you can pull prints off of them? Grease film on a glazed surface? Huh. Sedge. But why? I've seen one of those garage boys before. Joe? No, the other one. Rusty. Something in my mind tells me I saw him in the pen at Huntsville. I want to check on his prints. All right, I'll get right on it. 
Joe's prints will probably be on those cards, too. Get a report on anything you find. But first, move that car out of there. Take it over to the sheriff's parking shed. If you can lift any prints in a NAR, you can get them on the afternoon plane to Austin. What was that business about asking Rusty the time, Jase? It wasn't his watch, that's all. The man who owned that watch always wore it two notches tighter. Comparing their sizes, I figured that Arthur McShane's wrist would be just about two notches thinner than Rusty's. The lab man lifted plenty of prints from the playing cards with two sets repeated most frequently. We sent the batch through to Austin for a check. The answer came back late that night. Mug shots and records on two men. Looks like you hit the jackpot, Jace. Yeah, Joe and Rusty both got records. Both served time in Huntsville. Same cell block. Can we pick him up? We can. Wouldn't be any use. We haven't even got enough on him to get him indicted. Uh, you know there were two men on the job? Could be any two men, Sam. I just well filed charges against you and the sheriff, if that's all I got to go on. Yeah. Besides, Joe claims he was alone when he fixed the car. It'd help a lot if we could prove that he wasn't. How about Wally out at the cafe? He saw the garage jeep. Maybe he saw who was in it. Mm, it's... Almost 11, but he stays open late for the truckers. And see if we can get him on the phone, Sheriff. Okay. Sheriff Walton speaking. Get me Wally's Cafe out on Route 27. Yeah. Want to talk to him yourself, Jace? Yeah, if you don't mind. No, no, no. She's ringing the number now. Here. Hold on till he answers. He'll be there. Okay. Wally's the Cafe. Now, Wally, this is Ranger Pearson. I was in your place this morning with the Sheriff. You said something about the Jeep from Joe's garage passing your place yesterday. Mm, uh, that's right. Uh, yesterday afternoon. You see who was in it? Well, I guess Joe was in it. Did you actually see him? Was he alone or with somebody? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Ranger, all I saw was the Jeep going by. You know how them things are. The curtains down the side. and Well, the rain was streaming down my windows, too. Uh, I saw the Jeep go by, but uh, I reckon I couldn't even swear I saw Joe in it. Well, thanks anyhow. Uh, sorry, I wish I could help you. You can. Just forget I called. No good, huh? No good, Sheriff. So far as he knows, the Jeep was driving itself. Maybe that story about the hitchhiking soldiers was on the level. Couldn't be on the level, Sheriff. Because they wouldn't walk away from a murder scene. Once McShane's car was running, they'd have driven it a few miles at least. It seems to me we could hold Joe on that. We could. Just long enough for some smart lawyer to get a writ. All he'd have to say is that the soldiers might have gotten another lift or cut cross-country to the railroad. Yeah. We could only find the money. Serial numbers for proof. Even the watch is no good. Mrs. McShane couldn't make a positive identification, and we'd no way of tracing where or when McShane bought it. Money's probably hidden away. They'll wait a mighty long time before they try to spend any of it. Uh, then we'll wait with them. I hate knowing a man's a murderer and not being able to prove it. Come on, Sam. Let's get over to the hotel and turn in for the night. All right. I'll walk out with you. Hey, Sam. Yeah? You know you got a grease stain on your pants? Oh, what? Right by your pocket there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, got some grease on him this morning lifting the hood of McShane's car. Shackle bolt was off a little. Had to feel around to release it. Hey, what's the matter, Jase? Joe had to lift that hood, too, to spray those wires. Him or Rusty. Grease film under there ought to hold fingerprints perfectly. Joe admitted he touched the car. That don't help us. No, but it'll help us if Rusty touched it, too. Because Rusty claims he wasn't there. Sam, did you... Look under the hood for prints. No, Jace, I never thought of it. That's the last place a man would think of. But we've thought of it now. Come on, let's check it. Yeah. Good thing you moved it out of Joe's place. If we find what we're looking for, Joe's out of business. Get anything, Sam? Yeah. yeah. Photos of the prints I left at the beginning of the show. Some of them smeared, few of them clear. All right, we can take them out of the bath now. Here's the Austin make on Rusty. See if you can match them under there. Just one print, one finger, Sam, and we're home. Want the light on now? Yeah, please. No, not this one. Too much radio loop. No, not this one. Hey, wait a minute. What? Find something? Uh, uh, give me that magnifying glass, will you please? Here. Now what do you see, Sam? Uh, right here, Jace. Look. The scar line. Small cut, see? 
I'll hold the Austin print right up next to you. Rusty's right forefinger. That's it, Sam. Watch that car and don't let anybody near it. Let's go, Sheriff. We got a couple of arrests to make. Neither Joe nor Rusty were at home, and Joe's car was missing from his house garage. We combed the town, but there was no sign of them. We started to hit the roadhouses along the outlying districts. Don't suppose they ran, do you, Jase? No, a couple of suitcases in the rafters of Joe's house garage. If he'd left, he'd have packed. He thought you swallowed that story about the hitchhiking soldiers. That'd make him feel safe. Where else would they be liable to stop? Well, I don't know. Just one more place out this way, then there's nothing for four miles until... Hey, Wally's place. I forgot to give Joe that message about Wally wanting the fan bill. Hmm. Wally didn't mention it when I called him from your office. Might have called Joe on the phone direct to remind him. Joe hangs out at Wally's place sometimes. Nights, I mean. Drums up repair work with independent truckers that stop there. Let's try it. We hit the jackpot. Joe's car was at Wally's place. Inside, one of the waitresses told us the three men were in the back shed putting a new fan belt on Wally's pickup. We slipped along behind a line of wash and waited for him to finish and come out. While we waited, Wally said something we couldn't hear as he bent down to the motor. Suddenly, Rusty jumped him. When? When did the ranger call you? Uh, a little before midnight. Why? Oh, why'd you wait until now to tell us? I just happened to mention it. ranger didn't want me to tell you at all. What do you want to know? Just uh, if I'd seen a jeep pass during the rain yesterday afternoon and then who was in it. Well, what'd you tell him? Well, what could I tell him? I just about saw the jeep. It was born, so... Hey, you guys in some kind of trouble? No, 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 of course not. So we better get back to town, Rusty. Hey, wait a minute. Get ready for this fan belt. That's right, fellas. Fix the man's fan belt. The ranger. Include me in the party, too, Rusty. Why, uh, Go uh, ahead, Joe. Finish your work. Rusty can help you. It won't do any harm if he leaves a fingerprint under the motor hood, either. Not under Wally's motor hood. Because Wally's still alive. Out of my way, Joe. Hold it. The gun, Joe. Uh, but I don't, not me. I, I haven't got a gun. Oh, holy mackerel. What's going on here? What did you do? I, I ain't mixed up in Just it. Just keep your hands up, Joe. Take a look at Rusty, Sheriff. Don't take much looking. Right through the head. Uh, he did it. It was Rusty. He forced me into it. Sure, Joe. Dead man's always to blame. You can tell us all about it down at the jail. You, you're going to leave Rusty here? Fix your fan belt and bring him into town if you like. Come on, Joe. Get moving. I want to hear more about those hitchhiking soldiers. Then I'll tell you about my dream. A liar who goes to Huntsville. With Rusty Holman dead, Joe Falladera made a full confession of his part in the murder of Arthur McShane. On May 3rd, 1951, he was sentenced to Huntsville Penitentiary for 50 years. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Herb Vigran, Lou Krugman, Bill Conrad, Ken Christie, and Lillian Bayer. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Next, it's the big show with Joan Davis, Herb Jeffries, George Sanders, Evelyn Knight, Groucho Marx, and your charming hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. Then enjoy 30 minutes of mirth and music with Phil Harris and Alice Fay. Later, Theater Guild on the Air presents A Foreign Affair, co-starring Marlena Dietrich and Richard Widmark. And for pictures of your favorite NBC stars, buy the current NBC Silver Jubilee issue a Radio TV Mirror Magazine. Next, it's the big show. All this and Tallulah, too, on NBC.